Hi, this is Phil Vaca from Enterprise DB. Thanks for joining me for this presentation on Containers in the Cloud, looking at Postgres Plus Advanced Server. In this presentation, we'll be looking at how easy it is to install Postgres Plus Advanced Server in a containerized environment. Many of you have probably heard some buzz about containers, and you're asking yourselves just how can you get started? Well, over the course of the next several minutes, we're going to show you just that. I'll be creating a series of Postgres containers and deploying them to a cloud infrastructure. In this case, I'll be using a product called Joint Triton. There are several different providers available. Joint's Triton smart containers are interesting because they contain a more developed network stack than your traditional Docker container. Additionally, they contain other neat benefits like persistent storage. But many of the basics of containerization will be applicable regardless of the platform we deploy on. Let's get started. What I've created here is a Git repository full of the scripts that anyone would need to install Postgres Plus Advanced Server. In order to use these scripts, of course, you'll have to have an account with Enterprise DB. And in order to configure this properly, we'll be using the Enterprise DB YUM repository. So talk to your account manager if you don't already have credentials. Since I am using Joint Triton to perform the demo, I of course have an account configured with Joint as well. And in this account, uh, I have also configured their command line tools. Even if you haven't used Joint services, it shouldn't be too hard to follow along what I'm doing. We'll be creating a base machine, installing Postgres on that machine, and then taking a snapshot. Let's take a look at the installation scripts, or rather script, provided for you in the Git repository. This installation script will call all the necessary pieces we need to install Postgres and configure it using some sane defaults. In order to use it, we just need to fill out a few pieces of information. We need our username and password for the Enterprise DB YUM repository, as I just mentioned. We'll also need to pick a password for the Enterprise DB user. Now this is the administrative user that has super user access, so do be careful with that password. And lastly, we'll want to configure a password for streaming replication. Since we're building an enterprise-ready solution, we'll want to take advantage of streaming replication, which is found in both the community and advanced editions of Postgres. With these pieces of information, the last thing we need to check is our pghba.conf. Now this file is used to provide network access. In the case of the joint E3B data center, Internal IP addresses will be designated with a 10.0 extension, and so we allow 10.0 to connect um, for replication for our enterprise DB user, and at a later point if we install the PEM agent. With these files configured, we're ready to begin installing. But what do we install Postgres on? Well, that would be the joint image that I mentioned earlier. We'll create a joint image using the command line tools. In joint terminology, a container is built out of two pieces, an image, which defines the operating system, and what they term a package, which defines the amount of storage, compute power, and memory assigned to the image. Those two pieces bundled together make up a smart machine. Let's take a look at the images that are available. Again, this is the operating system. Now, Postgres Plus Advanced Server is certified to run on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and Scientific Linux. And in the joint smart data centers, the one that's available to us is CentOS. Let's list all of the available CentOS images. We see several different releases of CentOS. Let's look at the most recent one and see the description. We see that this image is part of a container native CentOS 6.7 64-bit image. This is exactly what we want. The fact that it says container native means that we're building a containerized solution. In order to use it later on in the command line, we also need to get the unique ID. And there it is. I mentioned the joint containers are also made up of what they term packages. Let's see the available packages that are compatible with our image. For our smart images, packages that are compatible will begin with the letters T4. Now we're building a database server, but let's just scale it at 4 gigs of memory for the time being. This is done with a simple command, create machine. 
we give the machine a name, and we list the image and package that we've chosen. And that's it. At this time, the machine is provisioning for us. We can list out the machines and see what's available to us. And the machine is assigned a permanent IP address. We can use this address and add it to our host's file so that we can make it more convenient to get to later. We noticed before the status says provisioning, but even though it's only been a few seconds, it should be done by now. And it is. Our machine, Hernes, is running. Now all that remains is to configure our install PPAS script, and we'll be ready to go. Again, we add the username, the passwords that we want, and save the file. And with that, all we need to do is run the script. It'll connect. And as we see, it will install first the yum mirrors and then the actual Postgres Plus package. While the script is doing its job, let's take a look at one more thing that I've provided in the Git repository. And that would be the second script, Make Replica. The Make Replica script takes two pieces of information a target that will be a replica, and a primary that will be the streaming server. The last thing we need to configure is the password we set in our previous script for replication. Once our machine has finished provisioning and installing, and it looks like it already has started and stopped the services, installed some extensions and copied over our configuration files, uh, the last thing we can do is make an image of this. Now this should be possible using the joint command line API but at the moment the current version doesn't support CentOS Smart Images, so we'll have to do it using the dashboard. Taking the snapshot through the dashboard isn't terribly difficult. We just need to find our running container. Looks like I need to refresh to see it. Click on the machine and find images. Now we can create our Enterprise DB image. Next, we just hit Create Image, and in a few minutes, it will be provisioned. And in just a few minutes, maybe two, our new image is created. We can use it again on the command line. Let's take a look how. All we need to do to get started with our image is to search for it from the command line. Again, we named it Enterprise DB, so we'll search for that starting term. And uh, pair it up with a package. We'll match it at the same four gigs. If we start that machine then, to be able to run our make replica script, we'll have streaming replication working almost immediately. and we can add the replication password to our replication script. And our new machine is running. Let's run our make replica. And let's take a look. And there we have it, a replicating host. I can add some data to the primary and we can verify that it's replicating to the destination. But I hope you now see that what we have is a working Postgres environment ready for the enterprise that we've deployed in a matter of minutes and totally containerized. Keep listening for further presentations as EnterpriseDB shows you how you can scale your database using containers.